Top of the morning, all you wonderful, beautiful people. Welcome to Well That Sucked Saturday. Before we dive too deep into this video, here is the snake in question, Lucy, the fire clown female that laid her clutch. And uh, it's her second clutch here. Much bigger clutch than she laid before. The first time she laid clutch, she had three eggs. This time she had 10 eggs, so she laid more than three times as many eggs this time. Um, obviously, we're gonna talk about the complications that happen with this, but I did want to start off with showing you that she's here, but here recovering. Um, expected to make a full recovery here, and uh, she's doing good. It's just resting, and uh... <sighs> okay. Bye, Hillary. I'm gonna go through the whole story of what happened from beginning to end, and I'm gonna put her back first. Two more things before we get into the meat of the video. First, here are the eggs that she hatched. Or laid. Pretty big eggs. I'd like you to pay attention in particular to this one over here, which if you can tell, I don't know if the angles are right or everything, but this egg is actually uh, much larger than most of the other eggs. I mean, it's in, in both girth and size, it's just the biggest egg. So we're gonna be talking about that one in particular, so take a look at that. So yeah, all 10, 10 eggs, all looking good, all with embryos and veins and looking good to go and zero slugs, so successful clutch on that aspect. Uh, third thing, Olympus Reptiles. Nice shirt, huh? It's signed by both camera guy Kurt and Matt. It kind of faded away because I, I washed it, but these guys are awesome. Great, great friends of the channel. Also happen to be a couple of our Patreon supporters. Transparency is what this video is about, and the Olympus Reptiles channel is another channel that is definitely all about transparency and in doing so, helping you guys potentially reap the rewards of uh, learning from other people's mistakes. <laughs> so I'll put a link in the description for their channel if you guys haven't checked that out already. They got a great channel. Okay, let's, let's dive into it. So here's what happened. I get home from Freedom Bird the other night, come in first thing, check on the snakes, which I'm sure Hillary's really happy I come in here first, check on the snakes before I go upstairs, but that's what I do. I came in here, take a look, and uh, sure enough, Lucy had laid seven eggs and it looked like she was still in the process of laying. I could see there were more eggs to go. And I was like, sweet. And I did what I've done with previous clutches and opened up the tub, put some lights on, get the camera set up so I can capture her laying an egg. I can tell you right now, I'm never gonna do that again. Lights, camera, action, and next thing I know, she leaves her eggs and goes off and takes off into the rack. And I'm like, oh, geez, that's not good. So I, I go back, I, I turn, turn the lights off, I'm like, okay, this is not, not gonna happen. Turn the lights off, turn off the cameras, close her up, go upstairs for the night to let her finish doing her thing. Come back down the next morning and see that she has laid an eighth egg and has appeared to have stopped laying though. Laid, laid an eighth, eighth egg, I could tell there's still another egg in her, a big egg, because I can just see it by looking at it. And she's not trying to lay it though, she's just laying on her eggs like she's done. You know, I can just tell by looking at her, she's like, I'm, I'm done. Immediately my mind went into, okay, what, what do I do here? I, need, I, think, I feel like I need to help her get this egg out. And I've seen videos of people poking a probe up in there with some lubricant to try and get a, um, egg bound female to let go of the egg and I just wasn't comfortable with doing that. What I have done before with other snakes as far as getting out big urates or helping them palpate something out is palpating. So I went into palpate mode and I'm thinking okay I gotta help her get this egg out. A to just help her get it out because she's clearly given up and B to get the babies out and let them start getting oxygen into the outside of their eggshell so they can survive and not get not die within her from not being laid. So this is a very painstaking process. I want to say if you do ever attempt to palpate a snake and palpate something out, patience is a huge part of it. Like I sat there with my fingers palpating very gently because you don't want to pop the egg either. I didn't want to pop the egg. I'm holding and squeezing her in my forearms. Literally for two hours I'm doing this. I felt like I was with my wife again in the birthing room holding her hand, squeezing her hand while she's going through labor because it was a long wait sitting there applying pressure on the palpating side and and allowing her to wiggle and, and work her way, work the egg out on her own, just with a little bit of assistance from me. But man, my forearms were just like burning up like fire, just trying to hold her, and literally for like two hours, I'm sitting there holding this snake. Fortunately, after a lot of patience, that egg did come and it, it breached and she, and she hatched it and it was huge. I was like, oh my God, that's why this thing is enormous. I mean, so the egg comes out and it's good, and I look again, there's a, there's a second, there's another egg, there's a 10th egg up in her that still hasn't come out, and I'm like, oh man. And so I decide I'm gonna try and help her palpate that one too, and I, I palpate that one a little bit, and this one moves 
like on its own way quicker. It like gets gets down there real quick. And next thing I know, it's coming out like like way quicker. Nothing nothing like two hours. Like it came it came right out essentially. And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, what? This does not look right. I thought at first I thought the outside of the egg hadn't finished calcifying and the veins were still exposed on the egg and it hadn't finished doing whatever it was supposed to do. I was like, no, no, I've messed up. I messed up bad. And then I realized that something was really messed up. It was that she had actually essentially prolapsed the egg out. So the egg was still inside her oviduct, but came out of her body, still in the oviduct. So it's like a, you can imagine, like, imagine like a sausage link and the other ends of the sausage are still inside the snake, but the egg is out and I'm just looking at this and I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? Called up my vet that I usually bring my snakes to and luckily they were, even though they didn't have any appointments available, they, they told me to come on down. So I put her on, you know, some moist paper towels, put her in a little temperature control box that I have for traveling. Got her down there. Long story short, they were able to, they might be sending me some photos of the, of the process they went through. So hopefully I'll be showing them right here, right? If not, then I'm just gonna have to tell you what they told me, which is that they made a small incision in the oviduct, got the egg out successfully. That was the, one of the eggs I showed you in there was uh, that 10th egg that was able to be salvaged, stitched up that oviduct, got it back inside her, put a couple other stitches in the vent to keep everything inside. And uh, now she's back here. And, I, and I'm, I'm sure that, uh, I'm anticipating that I'm gonna catch some blowback in the comments for, for doing what I what I did there. Um, that's fine, I mean, I, I, I don't care. You can, I, you, there's nothing you could do. There's literally nothing you could type down there that will beat me up more than I've already beat myself up and that I has, was beating myself up as I was waiting for her at the doctor thinking, what the hell, like, you know, thinking back all the things I could have done differently. A, just leave her alone altogether. Not even, you know, try, bother trying to capture video of her catching an egg and, you know, putting extra stress on her by putting cameras on her stuff while she's trying to lay, which is something I'll, I'll never do again just because of this experience. I've got snakes laying on camera. I can always refer back to that footage, you know, if I, if I really want to show a snake laying an egg. So um, that, as well as if I could go back and do it again, I would not have tried to interfere whatsoever. I wouldn't have tried to help palpate. I would have just waited longer, um, been more patient and waited until either tried to actually lay on her own or if it went far enough, I would um, go to the vet and what Riley recommended was uh, oxytocin. You know, ask the vet for oxytocin to help get those contractions going and, and possibly help her lay. Same thing they do with humans. It's a little slower with reptiles, but I, from what I understand, it is something that is done. So that's what I do going forward. Um, I really didn't, didn't want to share this story with you guys, but any of you that have watched the channel for any amount of time know that I do keep a pretty open book here and I, I share failures as much as I share successes. Um, luckily, we tend to have more success around here. This breeding season is going crazy. In fact, those of you guys that prefer to see me sitting in front of the camera talking about snakes and showing snakes, you've gotten your you've gotten your fill in this last couple weeks because our whole breeding season is going to be condensed into like a couple weeks of laying. And then in a couple months, it's gonna be a couple weeks of hatching and you guys can get your fill there. For those of you who prefer to see me going running around, we're gonna be doing a lot of that too this year. So we're actually gonna go visit my sister in Reno. I digress. I'd rather share the failure with you guys and and hopefully help people learn and from my, my, my own mistakes, be something positive for other people to see, you know, because I know a lot of people don't like to share the bad stuff that happens, especially when it's something like that I think is my own fault and I had a big role in making that bad situation happen if somebody else can learn from that without having to go through it themselves. Great, you know, obviously there's tons of things I wish I would have done differently looking back in hindsight. However, uh, silver lining, of course, is that she is good and expected to make a full recovery here. Uh, so, and, and she has a completely solid clutch of 10 eggs. All 10 are looking good and I expect them all to hatch. One thing uh, you can definitely expect going forward is that she's done breeding. I mean, she's now gonna have scar tissue on her overduct. There's just no way I would breed that girl ever again. She will be staying here, of course, 100%. Uh, never going anywhere, never breeding again. Luckily, she did have a daughter that produced her own clutch this year. So we've got that. She's gonna be a grandmother this year. So, you know, she's gonna get to retire at least a grandma. Just hang out here and look good. Maybe I'll get her a nice uh, big display thing. Or maybe I'll just leave her in the tub where she seems to be pretty comfortable. Another part of me wanting to share this part, this thing is that then it holds me accountable too. You guys, the fact that I have an audience that help me stay accountable and that I will never breed her down the line and I will always keep her here and let her live a good full life. 
um, regardless of that fact. You know, even if a devil comes over tapping on my shoulder like, hey, you know, it's been like 10 years, maybe you should just try breed her again. And you guys can be like, remember when you said you weren't gonna breed her? You remember that? And they'd be like, oh yeah, I guess I probably shouldn't. No, but I'm, I'm not planning to anyway. Anyway, so that's uh, basically what's going on here with uh, That Sucked Saturday. Mm, I hope that it helped you guys. I hope that uh, you appreciate getting to see the good side and the bad sides of things that happen around here. Um, yeah, anyway, let the bashing begin. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good day.